So what is going on everybody? Fernando Silva here with another video and if you guys had the chance to catch the first episode we are now doing a series on Microsoft Office and their suite of products on the iPad Pro. Microsoft announced their new Microsoft 365 account, their personal account for just $6.99 a month which I think opens the door for you know more people to actually establish and adopt Microsoft Office on the iPad Pro. And also Microsoft has also taken that into account with the iPad users and Apple users saying, hey, we have a lot of Apple users, we better give them what they want, if not they're gonna leave us for something else. And honestly, they're making great strides and Microsoft Office is becoming kind of my go-to productivity suite on the iPad Pro. Because for me, for what I use it for, it's 100% of the way there, especially if you compare it to Mac OS and Windows 11 or those versions of the Microsoft suite of products. But without further ado, today we're gonna be talking about Microsoft Word on the iPad Pro. Let's do an entire overview and see exactly what we got going on. Let's go. Okay everybody, so let's jump right into this video. So the first thing I'd like to show everybody is exactly what operating system I'm on or what version. So if we go here, you can actually see that I'm on the beta program. So if you follow the channel, you know that I review all the beta programs, try to make sure that they're up to date, see if there's any bug performance, any issues, and also any new features that are coming out. So I am on the beta program and this stuff still works pretty perfectly. So that'll give you guys peace of mind if you're on 15.1 or below. And then today, like I said, we're going to be talking about Microsoft Word, and we're going to be talking about it in a few different ways. First, I want to see how it works within iPadOS, and then we're going to talk about the actual function of Microsoft Word. So here's Microsoft Word. Let's open it up, and you can see that with the M1 chip, right? So I'm using an iPad Pro, the M1 iPad Pro 12.9, but with the M1 chip and just how fast these things are, it opens instantaneously, right? So I'll quit out of it, and you can see how quickly this opens. Like show me another computer outside of let's say a MacBook Air with the M1 or any M1 computer. Give me a Windows computer that opens up these applications that quickly, right? Like I'm opening this instantaneously. So here we have Microsoft Word and you're greeted with all your templates, right? Do you wanna start from scratch? Do you wanna have a double spaced one? Do you want a newsletter? Very, very familiar if you're a Microsoft Word user. And then what I wanna do next is actually check out to see how multitasking works. So if you guys are on iPadOS 14 or older, you know that multitasking works by just sliding down, so you swipe down, and you get all the multitasking applications. So I can grab YouTube right here, move it over to the right, and it seems like it works within multitasking. But then also what I could do is with the new version of multitasking, you have these three dots up here. So if you click on these three dots, you can click on there, and then you have the ability to go with split view or slide over, and then if you see on the bottom of the screen, you have the ability to add a second instance of Microsoft Word. So if you have another Word document that you need to edit on and maybe copy some data from each of those, then you have that ability. So if you just press plus on this right here, you now have two instances of Microsoft Word. So if I leave here, swipe up, you can see that I have two Microsoft Words open with no, no problem whatsoever. So another way that I can do this is if I go into the multitasking, we'll go into the split view, I'm gonna kick this one over to the right, grab another Word application, and then you can see now I have Microsoft Word running side by side on the actual iPad Pro, which is beautiful to see because this was something that wasn't happening, let's say two years ago with Microsoft applications. You did see that the Microsoft Office Hub, so if you guys saw the first episode, Microsoft Office, the Hub application, you can't actually multitask with multiple instances of the same application, but you can multitask with one other application. So let's go here again, let's press on here, we're gonna move it to the left, and actually, I can actually press on Microsoft Office, and then the Office Hub opens up perfectly. But if I wanna go with the Microsoft Office Hub twice, that's where it's a no-go. And then lastly, the other way to multitask is actually with gestures. So if I grab my finger and swipe down from those three dots, it automatically kicks it over to the right, and then I can grab another Word document and open it up on the left-hand side. So that's an easy way to actually go to multitasking, just swipe down, grab whatever you want, another Office application, swipe down from here, another Word document, so you're good to go. And then again, you have all those instances. And then lastly, this is actually a new one, and this will work with anything that has multitasking, it doesn't just have to be Microsoft Word, but you can actually grab this and move it into the actual thing in the middle of multitasking. So now if I click on here, you can see that I'm greeted with two multitasking windows. And you saw how quick that is, right? There's no rebooting of the application necessary, there's no refreshing of the application, everything works as advertised, and I'd love to see that. Okay, so now what I wanna do is talk about the function of Microsoft Word. Now we know that it plays pretty well with iPad OS and all the multitasking and the gestures and all that fun stuff. So that's always good to know because some applications take a little while to actually you know, start to adopt the multitasking and the iPad OS 15 kind of nature of the OS. So now let's click one of these different templates. Let's go to this newsletter. I kind of like what I see here. 
it's working on it, it's creating it, give it a second, and boom, now you're in here. So here we are with this template, right? And you can see that Microsoft Word has actually adopted itself pretty nicely to iPadOS. So the first thing that I like to test out to see is how cursors work, right? Because this, this new cursor support, I'm using the Magic Keyboard with the trackpad. We have this new little circle ball. So on top, you can see that it kind of hovers over and then attaches to all the different options that you have here. And then when you go near text, you can see that it turns into a text editor cursor, which is something that we're a lot more used to, right? And it acts just like that. You can go in here, highlight whatever you want. Again, it's a template, so it's acting a little bit differently, but I can delete here, start saying, hello, thank you for watching. Don't forget to sub. And then you can see that it goes from a circle cursor up here. And then if I go down here, I can actually just grab this, highlight whatever I want, and then I'm good to go. But let's go through all the actual toolbar menu options that we have here. So on the home, it's very, very typical, right? You can highlight something. And what I can do here is I can bold it. I can, you know, italicize, underline. I can change. I can add a strike through if I want to. You can go here and highlight it in whatever color you want. Change the actual text color if I want to make it like green or something. So you can see that it works just like any other Microsoft Word document. You know, very simple. I can add bullets if I want to with a little green bullet right there. So add indentation, whatever you want. And that's very, very normal, very, very familiar. So what I want to keep doing is actually go through the rest of it. So if I go into insert, we now have an abundance of options. Like look at the amount of options that we have in order to insert pretty much any data that we want into this Microsoft Word document. So here, what we can do is add, you can add a chart, right? And then you can see that when you add a table, immediately you get a brand new toolbar option, which wasn't there before. So if I go down here, you can see that I'm now in the table viewing. So we have different types of options inside of the toolbar. Whereas if I click down here, you can see that the toolbar is back to normal. But if I click back into the table, then I have all my table options, which are up here. But if we continue on with the insert option, we can have the ability to insert images. So if you guys want to insert this new wallpaper, which is here, which is by Knoopsy, shout out to him. This thing is awesome. These are all different wallpapers that are there. And then again, you can see on the toolbar menu that we're editing a picture. So now we have another toolbar menu option that's kind of popped up here with everything that you would want with that picture within the Microsoft Word document, right? Which is adding different styles, adding shadow, reflection, wrapping text, you know, bringing it forward, bringing it back. So it acts very similarly to Microsoft, you know, Word on the desktop experience. But if we continue on with the insert, you know, like I said, you have the ability to add in images and then you even have the ability to go into your camera. So click on the camera, take a picture, and then it gets added right into your Word document, no big deal. So it's almost as if you have an always on scanner ready to go. And you can see that I'm manipulating this just with my trackpad. And then you can resize it. And then also, since it is a touch interface first, you can grab it here and make it bigger and smaller with your finger. So it works perfectly. And then we have the ability to draw, right? That is what sets the iPad apart from any other, you know, Apple device. It is the only device that is a touch first or pencil first idea. Like it has a built-in stylus, right? Mac OS computers don't have that. iOS phones don't have the ability to use that. So we have the ability to do whatever we want with this Apple Pencil. So I grab the Apple Pencil, click on the stylus that I want, and I'm immediately drawing all over. So it doesn't really constrain you to one certain section of the Word document. You can draw wherever you want. And you can, again, I'm just pinch to zoom out. So that's another thing that I love about Microsoft Word, the intuitiveness and in how it works with touch first. So I can put a hello here. You know, I can add a little heart which is nice, which is a terrible heart. <laughs> Don't judge me on that. And one thing that I did want to test out was to see if Scribble actually works. So Scribble is something that came with iPadOS 14 where it kind of used shapes. So if you were to draw a triangle, it should automatically help me make that shape. Unfortunately, it doesn't finish that shape for me. So within something like the Notes application, that does happen. And I know that Microsoft OneNote does have that ability. So maybe it's just because Microsoft Word doesn't have that ability. And then Scribble also is not available unless you use it inside of the search option. So Scribble is this option. The only way that it works inside of Microsoft Word is if you search. So if I go on the search bar and say, hello, then it'll turn that into text and it'll look for hello anywhere throughout the actual Word document. But if I try to do something like Scribble where it's, you know, handwrite to text, it's not going to work on here. So if I type in hello, it's not going to automatically turn it in, into text, unfortunately. But again, if you don't have an Apple Pencil, Microsoft Word does give you the ability to draw with touch. So if I click on this button right here, I can use my finger, which is what I'm using right here, to do whatever I want and just continue to draw all over it. And then you can actually select objects that you've drawn. So if I want to grab this hello, I can actually grab this hello and make it bigger and do whatever I want with it because, again, I drew that hello. Microsoft Word knows that it's one kind of image and then you can manipulate it however you want to manipulate it.
So now that we have the draw out of the way, let's go into what this little plus sign is. So you have the ability to kind of change what kind of pen you want and add some more. So that's perfect to see. But now let's move into the actual layout. So layout, very simple. It lets you to change the orientation, you know, change the margins up. And there's some predefined ones on here. You can do custom ones. You can change the orientation, landscape, portrait. You can change the actual size of the actual document that you want. So you have the regular letter, you have legal documents, which are like eight and a half by 14, a little bit longer because I have so many words in the legal world. But that's pretty much what you have when it comes to layout. You know, you can add your columns in here, which is good to have. So for instance, if I want to go on here and add columns, I can do two columns and there you go. It'll split it up perfectly. And then you have the review section. So this is the review section because now within Microsoft Office and Microsoft 365 Personal, you have the ability to collaborate, right? You can share a file by clicking on this button right here. So you can set, send a copy, save a copy, and then you can collaborate it in real time, just like you would in a Google Doc or any other collaborative software, which a lot of people do these days. But obviously you got your spell check in here, you know, you have all your different word counts, all the information that you would need. So let's say you're writing an essay that needs to be 4,000 words, you know, or 4,000 characters, you know exactly how far you are with the word count right here. You can add comments. So say, what is up with this heart? It looks terrible. And then next time somebody logs into that document that's shared, they'll be able to see it and give you an answer back, right? And you can delete that comment, you know, mark it as checked, move it over. You can actually track changes. So there's different iterations of that Word document, very similar to like time capsule back in the day. So that's good. And then display for review. So show all the markups and things like that, which are all different ways of just collaborating better in real time, making sure that people know everybody's thought process and what they're thinking, why they're thinking what they're thinking. And then lastly, if I quit, quit out of the comments, we have the view tab. So in the view tab, you have the ability to kind of change how things look for not only yourself, but then also see what the hell they look like on other people's ends. So you have the mobile view on here, which allows you to see what it looks like on mobile, which I don't really like. Print layout, a lot more desktop like, and then you have your headings, your immersive reader. You can have a ruler up here to make sure you have your correct margins. You can go page by page, you know, page width. So you can go all the way out, zoom in and out. So you have everything that you would need from a text editor, especially something from Microsoft Word, right? And then again, we have our table over here because it was on, you have our image over here. So again, picture shows up. So everything is just very intuitive. It works how it's supposed to work. And I've been very happy with Microsoft Word on the iPad Pro. And again, this is gonna work with any iPad that's running iPad OS 15 and higher, maybe even iPad OS 14. But then the last few options you have here again is just a quick button for the, or a quick toggle for the mobile view versus not. You have a quick little spotlight search here, which is very similar to spotlight search on the actual iPad OS operating system. You can search within, so like word search within the actual word document, search and replace, which is what we saw earlier. And then like I showed you, ability to save a copy, save the location in your OneDrive. And then these three dots, we have a little bit more, right? So we have the ability to send copies here. We can actually export as a PDF, which I know some people really like to do. You can print directly from here and then check out just the properties and the information on here, which is good to go. So that's what we have when it comes to Microsoft Word. And the last few things that I do want to touch on is, let's say we multitask, let's go into a Word document. I'm gonna click a blank one here. Can we grab data that's on one Word file and move it over to the next one? So for instance, if I wanna grab this image, let's see, can I control C it using my hotkeys? There it is. So if I wanna go here, you know, control A to highlight everything, control C to copy, bring it down here, press enter a couple times, press paste, and then you can see that everything gets copied over. So now you know that you can manipulate data however you want. So what I do wanna see is if, it, if I highlight some text, if I grab it and I try to move it over, what's gonna happen? So it doesn't seem like it can move over. It seems like it kind of moved it up here kind of weirdly as a link, but hey, at least you know that you can copy and paste stuff pretty easily. And then again, you can have as many as you want. So if I wanna do one of these, move it over to slide view and then open up another one. So now I have one there and then grab this, split view this one to the left and open up another one. So now I have like a million of them, right? So you can see that it multitask very, very well, but let's get out of this view, go to the normal view. Hopefully you guys learn something new. So that's gonna do it for this video, everybody. Like you guys saw, Microsoft Word is actually, I wanna say, you know, 100% of the way there. Like you can do all the multitasking features, so it adopts all the iPad OS stuff that we want. So we get multitasking, you know, we get the 13.4 cursor support adoption. So it works very well within iPad OS and being able to multitask with different instances of it. So that's a beautiful thing to see. And then just the amount of actual customization and function that you get out of Microsoft Word. If you had told me that Microsoft Word was gonna look and feel like this, you know, even three years ago, I would have been like, you're crazy. Because when Microsoft Word originally dropped for the iPad and for iOS and inside of the App Store, it was just a text editor, everybody. Like you could do some bold and underline and some highlight, but it was very, very watered down. 
it gets you like 20 to 25 percent of the way there to the actual desktop class versions of these applications but now especially if you're using both of them at the same time it's a perfect combination but even if you're an ipad pro only user and that's what you use mainly because you're on the go and you're a business professional that wants to get things done Microsoft Word is there, like it's ready to go. And if you guys want to use Microsoft Word, I highly recommend it on the iPad Pro because there's very little, if not zero difference between Microsoft Word on the iPad Pro and iPad OS, and then Microsoft Word, let's say on Mac OS on the desktop class browser or the desktop class you know, operating system. And I know I keep mentioning this with the iPad Pro, but as long as you have any iPad running the latest iPad OS 15.1, this thing is gonna work like a charm, whether it's a $330 iPad, like original, you know, iPad 9, or the latest and greatest iPad Pro. The iPad OS does not discriminate on how much money you spend, so these applications are gonna work very well regardless. But that's gonna do it for this video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. Don't forget to check out channel sponsor Paperlike, first link in the description below if you guys wanna check them out to protect your iPad. They did just release new iPad mini screen protectors, so if that's what your new wave and that's what you guys got, by all means jump on it while you still can. But that's gonna do it for this video, and until next time. Peace.